In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today does come from, we're, we're going to take a, a quick break from the book of Daniel, and I wanted to, because of what has happened today and, and the, of course, the, the big news story, the media firestorm that resulted because of the abortion law, I thought it was important to look at a, a verse that really sort of reflects that. And there are countless verses that I could go to talking about how abortion is wrong and how God creates life in the womb and he has a specific plan for each person that he has even before they were born. There's a mountain of scripture I could have chosen from on that. There is no shortage of scripture that decries the shedding of innocent blood, so on and so forth. You, you probably are already aware of all these scriptures. But I wanted to go back to principle. I wanted to actually, instead of talking about the Bible's negative commands and how it talks about abortion is wrong, and it is, and it's appropriate that we can look through the scripture and see that, I think it's also important to realize why abortion is wrong. I think it's important to realize why, in principle, there is nothing loving or compassionate about abortion, and in fact, it's the exact opposite. And I can think of no better verse to do that than to look at some of Christ's own words in the form of Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did, not, uh, you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. What's important to understand about this verse is Christ had just finished a very elegant speech explaining the importance of taking care of those around you. Taking care of your brothers and sisters, those that are hungry or thirsty or imprisoned or impoverished, that in each of these scenarios, the Christian thing to do, the morally correct thing to do, is to do everything within your power to try to help them. And it's, it's such a reversal of the Christian virtue. You see, one of the things that we also see earlier in Christ's ministry is that he talks about in the Sermon on the Mount, going the extra mile. And I'm not even saying that as a Turner phrase, because that's actually the origin of the phrase, go the extra mile, that Jesus instructed if somebody asks you to go a mile with them, then you go too. If somebody asks you for a coat, you give them your cloak also. It's part of the bedrock foundation of Christianity, that you love one another, and that if that love causes you to make a sacrifice, then that's actually something you should be not only willing, uh, not only able, but willing to do. One of the things that is talked about as part of the Christian virtue, as part of the, the selfless love of Christ and of God, is that we should be able to put up with inconveniences or even stress that's far greater than inconvenience, even putting ourselves in, own da in danger if it means doing what's right for another, for serving another, and for protecting them. And here we see Christ in the book of Matthew saying that if you have done any of these things to even the least of these, the least of these that are my, my fellow brothers under our common Father, God the Father, then it's as if you've done it to me. And you see, that's really why abortion is incorrect. We can talk about the fact that God says it's incorrect, therefore it's incorrect, and that is also a valid statement. But the reason that God has said that it is incorrect is because it is wrong for you to put your own desires, your own wants, your own needs, or your own comfort ahead of the needs of another. You see, hatred 
it can certainly be the kind of hatred that we all think about, malice. In other words, you actively pull against somebody, you actively hate somebody, you actively do evil things to them. But it can also be apathy. Because hatred is just a lack of love. And so, while it could certainly take the form of malice or wrath, hatred can also take the form of apathy. Someone that is so unconcerned with other people that takes no thought of, of them or what's right for them or what's best for them, that they act on their own selfish impulses and don't really care who it hurts. Those are attributes that could also be ascribed to somebody that wants there to be elective abortion still allowed. Somebody that is so concerned with what they do with, quote-unquote, their body, and I won't go into the arguments against that right now because it's not the purpose, but they're so concerned with what happens to them, they completely disconnect themselves from the fact that they're hurting somebody else. That they are robbing somebody of all of their choices so that they can make one choice on their own. That they are taking the life and the right of another in order to satisfy their own convenience, in order to not inconvenience themselves with the burden of a child. I think that, like so many of the problems in our country, in fact, most of the problems in our country, this issue would be resolved virtually instantaneously if all we did was remember to act upon the Christian virtue of love. There's so many problems in this country that if we just did that, if we just acted in a way that is Christ-like and conformed ourselves to God's will primarily through the method of loving each other and, of course, understanding that in Christianity, love means sacrificing that which you want for another. If we just applied that principle, the same principle that Jesus applies to us every single day and did so at the cross to forgive us of our sins, then we wouldn't have to worry about this issue. And we wouldn't have to worry about most of the issues facing us as a people. So let's endeavor every single day to try to act more on this, to give of ourselves, so that we may really find a way to love others. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.